City of Ice Guy By Deranged Hobbyist Portal Fantasy Ice Guy Post-Apocalyptic High Fantasy Magic Warning This Fiction Contains Graphic Violence Profanity They should have left since they came in the world of Horson, a powerful summoning magic appeared onto this world. As it has occurred per centuries to millennia, but this world changed since the last summons start a new era. That same era ended led to this world's ruin. Then one day, another group of people are summoned, and it is more than just living being appeared, a city itself appeared and changed parts of the region. As they did their best to find a way to lead this world, they started to change their mind. For the people of Horson, not all of them agreed. Raker Mond, Chapter 001 History had told us, but the mystery of the beginning still questions of many nations. What is more problematic that the entire world of Horson never once have rivaled before the legends of it all? Until the new discovery of a so-called another world hero, and this hero provide the wisdom and knowledge from their home world. While during that time, that's where the war started. Now the entire world changed as the old maps of the globe never recognized the center of the Pangaea continent. The continent is split as the center sink to the bottom with the other remaining islands rose within. The surviving west and east side of the continent are forever be separated from the whole. It is a mystery that the ancestors never witnessed. The man spread his words with his allies as they travel down south in Kintina regions. All is assured as the discovery of a mysterious city appeared on the shores of the southwest. It's never been the first, but heard from the calls from that city where other locals near their homes spread like it matched from the stories. Another world hero. Words kept ringing to them as the people themselves of that city came to theirs. Working together to form a relation between the two neighbors, others never give a notice where this apocalyptic world is still rebuilding since its downfall. The people from the city had their own issues and asked for help from the allied nations on Kintinu. This man with his guild traveled down south, where the city is called Ice Guy City. Walking in long distances, by foot, without any use of any mobile sources, like magical teleportation or transports. In some times, they saw some familiar myths of machines coming past through them. Cars, trains, and trucks passed by them as it leads to the other city somewhere north in their directions. The rumors were true, they could find any recruits there as the other rumors spread by the other world or themselves. They are staying. And questions spread of more rumors from within, it spreads deeply and they are surprised of what they heard. 320,000 of them in that city. Few days have passed, and the guild finally reached the border where the roads looked different between them. The city roads end out to the wilderness and the roads itself remained in good quality to the bridge that the old map tells that this area should have consist of mountains, but now disappeared with only a site of mixed biomes in the once mountainous area. Walking towards the city where they saw the border guards with other people like them stayed outside and interacting each other. Please stay here in the border area for identification, sorry for the inconvenience. Other worlders are here wearing out of the ordinary as the people who want to venture war in their journeyman clothing. These other people however wore anything unusual to the men of the guild. Patience judges these locals, while the other worlders, bringing out familiar myths coming from the tales of the old hero's world. After witnessed it, they are relieved of seeing such a sight. Many worlds would have against these far advanced world, but in this world, they already have it. But now it is in ruins, and many already know of these other worlders are. There are gods might bless these other worlders, but in the end, they are living the dead world from an unforeseen war. The border guards had reached the guild and proceed them to enter the city. The city remained intact, but parts of it seemed to be cut off like the roads they found. The sounds from the other worlders spoke to the newcomers who entered their city. Sorry for inform you, but this city should have lights here or there. Since we don't have power, we will still help you the best we can. The man who spoke the other locals about the situation, these words pass on to other people until reaches the guild. One of the guilds spoke. They are looking for materials or anything to power up their city. 
however, the news already reached from the other cities within the center regions in Kintinu. It's more likely days ahead to prepare. They might have it soon. The rest of the guild members heard about it and doesn't bother by it except for gaining new members. Since seeing them as human as they are, and more to where these people have other tools that are better than theirs. The guild listens a bit from the guards about this place. The guards talk about their city that got here. They start mentioning new information about the situation of the people. Some of them listen carefully for the recent happening to this city. Where the guild is only ten of them came to this city, they never thought how the relations of the people themselves had mixed response in their situations. The city is divided into four ideologues, the one who stay, the one who leaves, the one who joined other cities, and the last are who joined the rebellion. None of them were surprised, and even the leader himself. Throughout the few weeks when the city appeared, no one can ignore the appearance of a phenomenon. These city folks are the same as powerful from the previous ones. They seem not matter to be all powerful as other news who are outlaws being taken down from the borders. The other worlders have speak some nonsense where they are the heroes. While the villains were getting killed by their own people, are they really not united? It doesn't matter, since what world they came from probably being like that for them. Still, the mystery to be unfold, as we only knew about mostly rumors. Even we are chosen to go here out of trust. The guards had guided them inside the city and left them to their journey. Night is coming, and the guild picks out their lighting from their bags. Not everyone had their torches and lamps with them, but it is enough. While they are preparing, they see many city folks use their magic to light up on their view. It is still dusk, and the mana users are surprised that they are freely using it. They are using their magic, their own personal mana with such power. Remember the legends, Juela. But. One of them sense the power they are using. It is beyond and excessive of their use. Seeing that will always questions the differences between them. The guild had already known the capabilities of those city folks. Through the rumors of them adventuring and helping the other city-states, they never imagined how they use it that bothers them. The city was here for a few weeks and now they are making good work of adapting their new world. Here, there are more people who are shouting at their own kind to promote to leave this world and the others wanted to stay. We don't belong here. We need to leave. Please, we want to go home. Stay here, we don't need to go back in that hell. The people on this world don't even care of our existence, at least they did not interfere our lives. We already suffered from our old world, we find a better place here. Why here? The people have said that their own people causes these calamity by their own supernatural power. It was a long time ago, there's no need to happen again. People shouting amongst each other from each side of the community. Yes, the people who decides to leave are true, and it was nearly two hundred years ago. Whisper among the guild about the situation. Day Jen, these people have already known the history of some of our world. Will they manage to achieve their plans? No, it's been two weeks. Other city-states are already prepared to help them leave, if they have the energy, they need to transfer all of them back. Their technologies will do it. If they do, our plan to recruit should have end before. A local from Horsen heard their conversation through his strong hearing and curiosity, where the people who decided to stay made him want to talk to them about it. Sorry to bother with you, but I too want to know. Mages and travelers who passed by joined the conversation as they are going in the same direction. They heard more bizarre ambitions as they speak of the news since the beginning. The other worlders started changing their minds after someone made a discovery of adapting their technologies to ours. It was several days ago, and seeing the community still here. I'm guessing the portal will be slowing down, and I'm from Agathias. People from Agathias City, they are the one who offered the creation of the portal to leave. For them slowly doing the project, whereas they possessed powerful magic within their state. They reached to where they have headed and the mage who told them about the portal is still here and all its hidden glory, built in this called depot of a port or docks, where the foundation started its sign of magic being used. 
Other magical users are also here and remained quiet until the mage who was with the guild reached out to them. They changed. The other locals told him bluntly and the mage only waves his hand to them in sign language. They understood and the guild themselves speak in signs, heads turning. The citizen of the city comes to them because of the commotion. Is there something wrong? The mage answered them only to a question, the foundation from Agathias, did it already been used? The citizen looks at the foundation and give their honest reply. Why yes, is something wrong? The locals turn to them and tell them about the details. The foundation should have creating rifts, why it's still hibernating mana. The citizens are brazed a suspicion in front of them. Sorry, our superiors know about it. We have to watch over it. The locals nearly closed to frustration, but they better not, because of their capabilities. Okay, I understand. The Raker Mon understood it, one of the guild members started to leave the groups and move away from the area, while the others kept moving forward. The mage who with them used his magic to join the other magic users, without even saying his goodbyes, due to the confusion talking about the foundation. The rest of the locals started to do what they are here for helping the Otherworlders project. Now the guild remained outside of the foundation, where a guide appeared and introduces herself. The woman shows herself as expressive and impressive as she can. The other members respond to her with trivial questions while the leader, Dae Jin, watches them play out. Hello guild members from Ender's Bridge, we never expect a guild from the Rune Isles to come to this city. Your people did manage to come to our realm and approached us with a quest. The guide understands and reaches her earpiece and contacted her superiors without a word. The guild members weren't impressed but more suspicious to see a non-caster could use telepathy as the other members can sense magic. Oh. The guide was a bit surprised and the others followed her expression. Sorry, but are you the same people who saved the groups of adventurers from the pack? Saved? Which of us did the saving? The guild looks around who was involved rescuing them. The guide continues on after more confusions from both sides. I mean one of your guild members, how it then, is the name right? She proceeds open in UI, where also says what she says, but incorrectly. Ha Eden. The guild speak his name and turn to him with easy peek to his view. Stands from the far side as he looks at the side view of the guide clearly observing the earpiece and phone close to her lips. The guide blushed while he stayed focused. Ha Eden, is it true you saved someone? He answered them as his curious remained in his sight of her. Not someone, but powerful ones of four. The guild members know him, but beyond humane to believe, and one female member said to him. Dead? Ha Eden sighs, and that's all they need to understand. They turn to the guide and answer her question. Yes, this man saved your people. Is there more jobs you wanted beside our other missions? Guide heard the female member and don't know why she reacted from a sigh, but her profession stood and she answered them. Why yes, they wanted to invite Mr. Eden to his rescues for the entire week and help them train better on a specific region. Finally, your request to do business will be comply to only the license members are allowed to. Thank you for listening and follow me. Daejin stares at Ha and the rest of the guild members for his activities with them, and using this chance at this moment. The guild members were not sure as his previous guild was less involved. The guide reaches her earpiece again as the guild member sensed no magic flow on her fingertips, but it can sense some magic items on it, where there is the other guild member who wore a headpiece with supernatural marks on it as it can intervene her without knowing. He used it quickly and stopped as he sensed something else, then he turned to the others. She has no telepathy, and our versions of communications differed than I thought. He looks at the guide strangely after that as he reached more than just a normal conscience, the guild members check on him from the way he reacted. He heard their minds out of their curiosity. He tried to break it off when some of them never believed who could react in doubts after using his telepathy. He quickly says. Later. And continue to follow the guide that she almost noticed them. Inside a building where most people gathered to have their businesses between the other worlders and the locals. 
all have gathered here of all races. Humans, goblins, elves, dwarves, and demons are here with an exception of all factions within this world. The guild members walked by past the meeting on screen where the speeches echoed in the city's broadcast. Their terms will be stated for them as the locals of this world should find a name of their race into the other worlders' terms. The first talk was heard where the human spoke, with no obligations to hinder the rest as they understood the circumstance except for the goblins. Humanest to humans, if this what you outer worlders called us, then your people shouldn't be in our same terms where your people are overvalued and beyond us in reality. It's fine Lord Coatel, we have already described ourselves to this world as the people of this city will tell you. The mayor of Sky City, who joined the meeting in order for this diplomacy to be acknowledged. Lord Coatel continues. City Lord, even as humanesques living in Rune Isles, you will solve your own border problems with the east parts of your city with those bandits. The Deimos leader interrupt the humanesque. Yeah, and my border is connected to yours, to the west beyond the hills. By the way, demons? Calling us to define us instead, learn our language is not proper. Lady Duhila, but we. Quiet. I don't know what changed your or your people's mind or even dare to have this meeting. This city is divided and worse my race's sanity will lose it. The demoness complaint where the public didn't know what she is saying, while the commotion spreads further. One of the city-state's leaders stopped the two arguing. Yeah, but I know, mismotivation, but we did far worse. Like the city lord said as we goblins, with an L, from goblins, did worse from our tribes. The goblin defended the city lord in his neutral stance. Diggits in my numprun, it's already been settled for them and with the rebellions moving to the coasts from the southeast. We have more blood splatters. Now now goblin lord, we did change after the past couple of weeks. We adapt to your world. Your people once wanted to leave and lost a few thousands of your own people, city lord. This lady have already committed to it once we first met. The demoness have showed her concern and the mayor of the city having a guilty argument with her. Luckily, for the other city-states leaders respond. Enough, this meeting is about cooperation with this new city in the southwest. The Ruziks are not here to hear past negotiations. The short fat man is right, these Ruzik. I mean dwarf and us gobs have to settle this before our next fight with the rebellions. Sorry for all of you and to your people there we still have old promises with the other city-states. So, will the elf will give us some remarks? The elf is with Lord Coatel whispering to each other. She heard the mayor and let her speak a few more words with him, then respond. Lady Duhila is right. I'll be judging for the relations and remember that the Eldison, or elves in your tongue, and the rest of the races have no grudges, but remember the apocalyptic reality of this world. The cities are your haven but the wilderness is free for your doom. Lord Quadell returns to her side again after she commented to the mayor. Strong twist, seems like your spouse have already pleasured your ears. The elf leader turned to him with the agitated expression. You know what I have said to them in my last sayings Lord Quadell, and my husband's voice will be true to me on his oath, while the meeting continues as the other city-states are arguing and negotiating and I'm more cautious to his people than our own. This conversation wasn't between the two as the screen of the meeting where the audience are focusing on their mayor. The guild notices on the screen where their lord and the eldison exchange whispers. One of the members telling them what they saw. The lord is talking to the Hanare behind the other city-state's leaders. Indeed, and from what she said about the doom is rare for an eldison to tell. Dejan stares at the screen as they walk by and his members pulled. His arms around where his directions pull astray. Raker Mons, our guild should be having more missions when our lord returns. You're probably right Dejan, from a Eldison to have this kind of conversation on public while the other leaders are busy showed that Agathias leader had showed some promises deals with the city lord. As they reached their room, the guild members wanted to hear what the man, who reads the mind of the guide, say. Where the room is empty the guild member tells them as their patience overtakes him. The magical item of the headpiece reaches through her mind, which is her inner thoughts of luxury, 
and it only works where people left their guard down or blatant focus on it. The guild members heard him again with another confusing explanation, his telepathy is great if he understands from a foreign mind. And because of that I sense her deeper thoughts on having a relationship. Like besides a man? Yes. Then what does she like? Women. The other members stared at the female guild members. Where they are hoping not to be involved personally. The women are either disgusted or intrigued, and the other woman controlling her own magics because of the discovery. What woman desired by another woman? Others know about the homosexual preferences, but there are some are against it with malice intent and would ignore it with their own oblivious beliefs. Enough, we already know about it and should behave during our business here until it's over. Daejin spoke out, and the guild members' confusion, cause a really strange view. The guild members continue on beside what they talk before the meeting with the guide to what they saw about the meeting on screen. Seems like the people are changing their minds. Even one of our members went to figure it out as well. We should perhaps meet him soon. Nothing else to say here and the city itself is turning the same types of structures from the Agathea city more or less. Anyway, beside talking about their city, the guild seem to be less favored, our talks in forming a union guild with them will be rather scarce since of their prowess, maybe? What matters now are the missions here, even at least only one recruit that would be enough, or there are others who managed to reach our city to join. The conversations were short, and it is enough for now, as the people who are back then wanted to go home are now changed for some reasons. Horson is an apocalyptic aftermath due to the past conflicts where a hero from another world caused this. These people changed somehow. They should have known about it from the other city-states. The city-states may already know, but the lives of these citizens will be influenced by their own race's culture or worse in mind. Are they recreating their own society? They will never know how eager those city-states leaders that are willing to help them leave. The city guild comes in their room and greet them in explicit manner, while the others beside him are reassuring, yet in the Raker Mon guild hears only suspicions. Are these the guild who rescued one of our adventurers? Yes, they are, and furthermore, those are the only party left survived the expeditions. The distaste shuck coming from the man's mouth as he turns his head while the rakers already figured through his behavior. Sorry, this is Gordon Trufan, he is one of our leaders within the city guild. You can see he is one of the city's best. Showing off his prowess with on sight to the raker mons. You can see, we have made special meetings like these. Along with the important meetings within our halls. Gordon speaks to them with no interest while the guild members themselves remained cautious and secure their surroundings. Daejin proceeds to talk to him for some time, as the plan needed to achieve and mysteries to learn. Inside this building, where the locals of this world should have thought they would lead this apocalyptic world, but today, they heard something interesting to the other worlders, and only they respond in their heads. They have think differently. Where this line became the minor problems to the greater ones. So, this is the only guild from Rune Isles to do business with us. Gordon looked dissatisfied as the others were actually excited. They may look eager to know about Rune Isles and its dangers that actually harms them. Daejan lets him give a proper excuse. Remember how dangerous in that area is, and the only resources needed for this region. The oars. True. Only the representative responds while Gordon stays in a front face. Because of the needed resources, we like, no, ask you to be our suppliers. Suppliers? Lord Lori yes already mentioned about it before. Is something your mayor want more of it? The city guild members tilted. Their monarchy-style economy is a challenge for them. Our business differs as we follow a different form of economy you see. The guild look at them in suspicion, even they have different political systems. They should know that Lord Lori E.S. is the prime and only source of doing political relations like trade. That's why this is the only guild to come here due to his order. One of the guild members mentioned to the representative. Have you realized the relations between the people in both cities are troublesome? Of course, but it will change in time. 
Anyway, we should talk something else, regarding of trades is required to the Lord's permission. Why only to the Lord? Because it is a guild center city, too many attacks from the Rune Isles that anyone could have lived peacefully. Dejan is right, only by a few examples. Either way, it is better Lord Lori E.S. will handle this. Then, how about regarding transports, securities, and even migration? All to the Lord, the only things you could request from us only by quests, or more like mercenaries. Gordon bursts out from his stand by slamming his hand on the table. And that's it? It's like your Lord is God or something. The guild kept quiet and ignore him, it is not the time to argue that needed to end a deal. Gordon is getting hard-headed and the two representatives are calming him down. Is there any way for us to have an agreement? There is, but only they are independent. By any means like no connection to higher officials. Together with the city guild is not proper, even you try other guilds, they will repeat what we are trying to say or worse. Gordon retaliates. What worse? Some things, that should have settled without violence. Gordon released his aura given a threatened appearance, the guild felt and ignore it as the representative stops him. Sorry, we need to find a good standing ground. After a short while. How about your demands then? Our demands only to find recruits in our way, the rest are regarding about following quests like any other city-states required. The meeting was not impactful and rely heavily on the Lord now. The representative wants a proper deal and they try to think of something. Looking worried, the guild member remained quiet with Daejin noticing him. Telling him that they can use telepathy for some reason. Yet he advised Daejin. Then individually should be a good accommodation then, and some of our guild members here are not a permanent member after the switch. Daejin nods at him and talked to the representatives. You should try to do sole proprietorship, without any guild or city involved, and see what you can profit from it. But that's too small to make an impact. You already have those required IDs, you can track them if you try reach out other people like us. I heard your world will have fakes. Then try to find a way, no one in Enders could betray each other. Since one of the guilds have bounty hunters that there are other ways to have the money. The guild look at one another and the one who is not looking is the example. The representative gives up and only follow their advice. Okay, if one of your members decide to join our guild. Make sure to give us time to make appointment, okay? Daejin sighs and accept what they can do for now. All right, but remember that this is the only negotiation you can make. In future businesses, you have to speak to our lord. Both sides have given their offers with only a mindless requirement of talking to the Lord. The guild member says to Daejin. They seem to be inexperienced of doing diplomacy. It's because this part of the city is not home for the authoritarians. While well, the other cities have one. In their world probably not. The guild have finished facing the city's arrangement, but they are still suspicious of why they are doing business separately.